Hey YouTube, it's been a while since I recorded my last video. Um, I just wanted to do a follow-up and make another character. Before we jump into that, I want to cover a few other add-ons that I have found in the three months or so since my last video. Not a big list, but I find these to be pretty useful. Um, Dice So Nice and Dice Tray are ones from the last video. Um, the New ones are Initiative Double Click, Lib Wrapper, and Settings Extender are both library modules. Anything on their own, they just allow other modules to work with them. So our new modules are Initiative Double Click, Monk's Enhanced Journal, Monk's Player Settings, Name Forge. Actually, I'm going to delete Name Forge because I'm not finding that one too useful. Monk's Player Settings, Pop Out, and Shared Data. So just to go through these real quick, one at a time, initiative double click is pretty straightforward. It just lets you edit initiative by double clicking on it. Um, quick tip, if you have a module and you want to figure out what it does, you can hover over this, I this info icon and it'll bring up the GitHub link for it. You can open up that page and typically there's a review. It gives you a description of a So initiative double clip lets you double click to edit initiative. Monks Enhanced Journals is a rework of the journals tab and the way journals work. I find this to be really useful. I have not fully decided on using this add-on instead of something else, but I'm playing with it for now and for now I like it. Monk's player settings is extremely useful because it lets you as the GM edit your player settings that you view them and edit them. And then it can also sync your client settings between browsers. So if you play on multiple computers, you can have settings here. You can have the same settings spread across those computers. Pop out another useful module when you're playing in the browser. This one, this, this particular module does not do anything in the Foundry Virtual Tabletop client. What you have to do is open it up in the browser. But pop out lets you open up certain windows in a separate window, basically. So if you have a character sheet open, you can open that character sheet in a separate window, drag it off to a second monitor. And then finally, shared data. Shared data is my own personal module. I can't share it. All this is is a module that I followed a tutorial for that basically lets me save my compendium of my Mongoose Traveler second edition skills from the Foundry Virtual Tabletop setup video. It lets me import that module to whatever world I make. So basically, I don't have to recreate those skills every time I make a new world. I have this module, I import the module, activate it in my world, and I have access to all of the Mongoose Traveler second edition skills that I've already imported. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, world and I'll show you what the other modules do or what, what those modules do. So I have a few players um, or a few uh, users. So Game Master is the one that's default. I still don't believe I have a password on it. I have other GM. This is the one I use in my browser. So when I run my games, I have Game Master open in the Foundry client on my computer. But instead of playing using that, I actually minimize that open up my own browser and, and log into the other GM account. And then I have a player account that I was just using for testing. So on this, I'm going to log into the Game Master. And I'll show you how to do it. So if you wanted to add your own like browser GM account, you would go to your settings tab, click on user management, and we'll just delete these two for now. Say you just had this one. Um, Password shows something being there, but my password for Game Master is blank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an additional user. I'm going to call this one Browser GM. I'll put a password on it. You don't have to. You can leave it blank if you want. User role will be Game Master. And save and return. So now I have two users. And if I wanted to say run my game using my browser, I can go back to my settings panel, 
at the bottom, click on invitation links. And since I am on my own computer, I could use the local network, but to double check that it works, I'm gonna use the internet. So I'm gonna click on that to copy it. It'll get a little pop-up. And then I'm gonna open up the browser. I'm just gonna paste that link in there. This connects me to my scene. Click on the browser GM, enter a password if there is one, join game session. So now I am in my game session. And as you can see, I get that first pop up, Dice So Nice. In my Foundry Virtual Tabletop client, I already have set up my Dice So Nice settings. What I haven't is in my browser GM. So I can do that real quick. Open up my 3D dice settings. I like my pers I personally like my Starry Night theme, which is under the standard. Save. I'll delete that message. And let's start going through these modules. So dice so nice. You've seen that when you roll a die, it just shows a nice little roll. So if I do slash r 3d6. 3d6 roll out onto my screen displays the result in chat dice tray i don't believe i covered in one of my other videos simply adds this dice tray at the bottom of the chat icon or the chat window so if i wanted to roll that 3d6 instead of typing it out i can just click on the d6 two three times and if i wanted to add say four to it i can do one two four now I'm rolling 3d6 plus 4. Click on roll. 9, 11 plus 4, 15. If you click on your chat messages, it'll expand to show your dice roll. 3d6. I rolled 3, 2, 6 plus 4 makes it, a, makes it 15. Pretty straightforward. That's what those two modules do. Sorry I didn't cover it in the other video. Initiative double click. I'm just going to create a little actor. Not going to do anything with them. Drag them out. I'm going to right click them, add them to combat. And if I go here to my combat encounters page, I can roll initiative. And then if I need to, I can double click edit initiative. That's all that does. We roll that. Scrap this combat, delete this actor. Next module, amongst enhanced journals. So since our last video, I've done a little bit of work. I'm currently prepping to run a adventure called High and Dry. So I've gotten a little bit of prep done for that. But I just wanted to show you what I've done. Um, I think I'll showcase the enhanced journals using this reference document. So this is something that I made. This is actually something I'll change real quick. So this is the Monk's Enhanced Journals. It's basically just a enhanced way to view your journal entries. You can have different tabs open with different journal entries. You can cycle between the two. You have your navigation pane on the right for your entire journal selection, which you can minimize using that arrow button. You can create new ones, you can create folders, do whatever you need to do, search. And then on the left is your navigation pane for that specific journal entry. So in this, in this instance, this reference document has three entries. I have my general reference, my UWP reference, and my spacecraft, spacecraft reference. If I want to minimize this window, I click on these, this little uh, flap sidebar icon, and that gives me a full window. So Monk's Enhanced Journals is just a better way to use journals within Foundry. The only gripe I have with it currently in this form is that I don't like these colors. I personally like a darker theme, especially for a space game like Traveler. So what I can actually do is I can close out of this, go to my settings, configure settings, click on Monk's Enhanced Journal, and I am going to 
set my background color to black, my background image to solid black, my sidebar image to solid black. I click Save Changes. And now when I open up that reference document, it just looks a little darker, easier on my eyes, and it kind of fits the theme a little better. As you can see, there are a few different settings. You can mess around with this, whatever works. You can do brush metal and a black background color. Gives you just a different look. This actually looks a little bit more futuristic. I'll stick with this for now. So this is Monk's Enhanced Journal. I suggest if you're interested in it, you read up on the GitHub. It'll cover everything you need to know about this. But I find it extremely useful so far, and it is what I am currently using as sort of a quick reference to my when I'm running my games. So I can have these reference documents open, and at the same time, I can open up another tab with my handouts. So like I have this NPC, I can open up the NPC in the handout, and if I want to show the players, show players. And this is just a really useful tool. And I suggest you look into it if you're if you're at all interested. The next module is Monk's player settings. Can't really show you that. Just because I don't have any other players currently on right now. Um I suggest you read into it on your own. But I, what I can say is you can view the settings for your different players. So like browser GM and, and GM, again, sync the settings between those two. Next module, pop out. So like I said, pop out, extremely useful on browser doesn't work on the Foundry client. So if I swap over to the Foundry client real quick, real quick, chat message, and I open up my reference journal again. If I want to try and pop out, click on it. Pop out cannot work within the standalone VTT, Foundry VTT application. Please open your game from a regular browser. This is the main reason of why I run my GM game from a browser. I swap back to my browser. If I open up that same reference document, I can click pop out. And now I have a separate popped out window that I can drag to my second monitor or a third monitor if you have one. And I can keep this separate. Same thing goes for players. Pop out. Now I have a separate window for my players. Extremely, extremely, extremely useful for people with multiple monitors. Um, yeah, other than that, shared data is the last one. All that, as I explained, all that does is it imports my list of skills for Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. Again, just to reiterate, I cannot share this because of copyright reasons. You're going to have to create this yourself. And if you follow tutorials on YouTube and on the Foundry Virtual Tabletop website, you can learn to make this module yourself i promise you not difficult at all all it really involves is creating a json a, a, a json file which is a file that it ends in json pretty straightforward i think that covers all of the changes that i've done so far and i think we're ready to jump into making another character just give me a second and i'll get up, i'll get set up for that